Hey guys, Jacob from Venture Addicts here, and in today's tutorial, we are going to create a smooth and simple lower third in Adobe After Effects CC 2018. All right, let's start with a new composition. Let's just do HDV 1080 29 and just make it three seconds. That should be plenty. Hit OK. All right, so first let's draw out our bar and our text. We're going to do Control Y to bring up a solid. Make sure it's white. Hit OK. Hit OK. And on your keyboard, hit Q. This will bring up the shape and we'll make a shape mask like this. I want to make it nice and skinny. And I'm going to make it a little shorter. I'm going to hit the selection tool here. And let me just drag this. All right, something like that. I'm going to hit a line, put it right in the middle. All right, let's zoom in and we'll add our text. Go up here to the text. I'm going to put the top one first. All right, let's do Arial. Let's do bold 45. And I'll make it all caps. You can do whatever you like. I like to keep it simple. Type in my name, Jacob Stiller. All right, I'm going to click on the layer on a timeline. Hit Control D to make a second one. Go back to the selection tool. And I'm going to hold down Shift and just drag it perfectly down like this. Let's change this to something a little smaller. Do Arial regular. Let's make it like 32. Looks good. And let's turn off the caps. We could do title case for this. Do Venture, Addicts, this little thing, Chief, Editor. It's a made up title, but I like it. Okay. Let's make the bar a little bit longer. All right, I just want it to be right on the edge like that. Fix my text a little bit. Same space. All right, that looks good. So once you have your top text, your bottom text, and your bar, I'm going to rename them just to stay organized. Let's put this on top. Let's call this top name. Do this one, bottom name and the bar. All right, so now let's animate our bar first. I'm gonna go to the 12th frame and I'm gonna go to mask, mask one and hit mask path stopwatch. So once you get a keyframe there, go to the first frame and I'm gonna zoom in here and just click on the solid and the three rectangles should pop up here. Just grab the middle one. I'm gonna hold down shift so it doesn't go up and down like that. And I'm just going to go all the way to the left. All right, so just put it right on top till it's gone. And there you go. So if we zoom out, we could see it play. Nice little shootout. So let's make it shoot back in by just copy and pasting the keyframes. Just put your playhead over the keyframe, highlight it, Control C, go all the way to the end, Control V to paste it. Do the same for this one, Control C. I'm going to go to the last frame. Let's do 12, 12 frames just so it's the same duration. So now it comes out and then it goes back in. All right, now let's make it a little smoother. I'm gonna highlight the second and the third keyframe. I'm gonna go to our graph editor here and with them both highlighted, right click on the second keyframe. We're gonna go to keyframe assistant and hit ease ease and you should get these nice little humps like this. If you're seeing something different, go down to this button here and you should have edit speed graph checked. All right, so let's highlight the second keyframe here. We're gonna grab this little yellow circle on the left. We're gonna drag it all the way to the left until it stops us. Make sure you don't go up or down, just stay right on that line. And we're gonna do the same for the third frame. Click here, click the right yellow circle and drag it. And you should end up with a nice symmetrical spikes on both sides. I'm gonna hit the graph out of there to go back to the timeline. And you can see we have our keyframes changed with a different little logo. And when you play it back, has a nice shootout and then it shoots back in. So a nice little velocity going on there. Next, let's edit our text animation. I'm gonna to toggle this down. Let's highlight both texts. I'm gonna hit P for position and I'm gonna bring back the keyframes here in the bar for reference, just highlight it and hit U. Let's start where the bar stops animating and let's go another 12 frames. So you should be on the 24th frame and we're gonna hit the stopwatch, 
highlight both of them and you hit the stopwatch it'll get both of them and then let's go back before the bar is just about to finish right there in the edge you can see let's do three frames so we're at the ninth frame and let's adjust the text one by one so on the first one i want it to be low here and then to pop out above the bar and then vice versa for the other one so i'm going to be nice and organized and just do it by 100 pixels should be good so it's at 511.8 i'm going to do 611.8 and i'm going to do the same for the bottom let's i want it to go up so let's it's at 573.5 let's do 473.5 all right so now if you play it back it has a nice little going through the bar like that and of course we'll add the mask later so it becomes revealed let's do the same as last time let's copy and paste the keyframes you can only do it one by one so let's select this one let's go three frames before same with this and then these last two which is 12 frames from this keyframe here copy paste so if you take a good look you can see everything is nice and symmetrical it's three frames here 12 frames and the same over here so everything uh moves at the same time all right again just like the bar let's highlight the second and third for both texts we're going to go to the graph editor right click on one of the frames go to assistant ease ease and with them all highlighted let's drag the left circle to the left and the right all the way to the right and it should look very similar to the bar with the nice spikes on the side nice and symmetrical I hit the graph editor to go back and if we play it everything has a nice smoother transitioning of uh, velocity all right so when it looks like this it's time to move on to adding the alpha mask so I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit and I'm gonna go up to the rectangle tool here select some random color just so nothing that's black or white so you can tell the difference and I'm gonna draw out a nice big rectangle and I'm gonna put it right on top of the white line here let me zoom in to make sure it's nice and exact I like to hit P for position under the layer and I can kind of click one by one and make sure the blue line goes right perfectly on top like you can see it there that looks good let's highlight it control D to duplicate it I'll hit my selection tool zoom out and I'll hold down shift just drag it same thing but on the bottom hit P for position and I'm gonna go right there so now it's perfectly on top and the bottom all right let's rename these masks so I have this one is the bottom mask just to rename it bottom and then this one is the top all right so now we're gonna put top on top of top name and then bottom on top of bottom name so keep your timeline nice and organized it's important now all we have to do is mask them which is a simple one click little move um, if you don't have your track mat open like this just toggle this little button down here and you should be able to get the track mat window here select your top name switch none to alpha top and then go to bottom name and select alpha bottom and you should see both rectangles disappear and if you play it back you could see that they reveal magically and then are hidden pretty neat you can kind of zoom in and you can just see how perfect it goes into that bar thanks to the rectangle being here all right now you can pretty much call it quits here but there are a few more tricks you can do to make it a little more seamless and to pop out better over your images so the first thing i'm going to do is add some drop shadow i'm going to zoom in here and i'm going to hit this to bring up the transparent grid and you can see because it's white it's pretty hard to see so if you're putting the lower third over something bright you not, may not be able to see it so let's make it pop a little better let's go to effects type in drop shadow all right and let's drag it on top of one of our layers all right and you can see the effect already makes it pop you can adjust it to your liking i'm gonna do 100 i like 135 and i'm just gonna do two so it's just right behind it i'm gonna copy this effect i'm gonna paste it on top of my bottom and i'm gonna paste it on the bar now another cool thing you can do to make it really pop is to add another shadow under the entire thing so a cool way to do that i'll zoom out here click off i'll do Control y we're going to go to the solid color and we're going to make it black this time hit ok and hit q and we're going to draw a rectangle here, let me redo that right over the name like that i click here and i'm going to rename it shadow 
and let's move it all the way to the bottom of the timeline. I'm going to kind of center it right there. Should be good. Okay. I'm going to control A, hit U. I'm just going to hide all these keyframes. Make it a little cleaner. There we go. All right. So let's hit T under shadow. We're going to make the opacity 30. And let's toggle down. Let's go to mask, mask one. And under mask feather, let's do 300. And you can see it has a very subtle backdrop. If you click the eyeball off and on, you can see it just helps it pop a little bit more. And you can make the feather 200, 400. You can make it darker, lighter. It doesn't matter. Um, but what you want to do is keyframe the opacity so it kind of pops up when the name appears. So I'm going to go to the ninth frame and I'm going to hit under shadow. I'm going to hit T and we're going to keyframe our opacity there. And I'm going to go back to the first frame and I'm going to make the opacity zero. So it kind of pops up very subtly when the line and the text appear. And we'll just copy the keyframes over here. And you can keyframe them if you want. It's pretty subtle, so it's not important, but it's always nice to put an ease ease just like that. And a third effect you can add is the motion blur, which I find very important. We can hit the toggle switch here. And you can see we have our motion blur icons. Let's check off this one and then let's highlight everything and just click one of the boxes and all of them should highlight. So now when we zoom in, we can see frame by frame that it makes all of the objects move way more seamless and realistically. So if I check off the icon, you can see before and after it was just kind of the rectangle moving frame by frame. And then when we have it checked, it makes it nice and blurry as well as the text. And one last thing we can do before we're done here is right click in the timeline, go to new null object, and we're going to right click on this gray area. Let's bring up our parent and links. Let's highlight everything except null. And we're going to grab one of the pickwicks and grab it into null. So when you select null and you select the square, you can move it around and you can put it in the bottom left. You can put it at the bottom right, wherever you want. You can even grab one of the triangles and hold down shift. You can make it bigger, smaller. And if you have all your icons rasterized, make sure you click all these. If they're vectors, uh, they won't lose any quality. So when we zoom into the bar here, you can see what it checked off. The pixels get a little different. So make sure you have all that checked. And just in case you're not familiar with exporting, I'm just gonna make this smaller. Let's say we'll put it on the bottom left on our project. And we're going to click in a timeline and hit control M and you'll see all these kinds of settings. All you have to do is hit lossless, go to RGB, change it to RGB alpha. And you can click here to change the name and set your location. I'll just put it in the desktop and hit save and you hit render and you're good to go to add it in your premiere project, your final cut project, whatever it may be. And then make sure you save this project. And anytime you want to come back and change the name, all you have to do is click it and retitle it and you're good to go. So there's a super easy way to make a smooth and simple lower third in After Effects. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please DM me on Instagram or on Twitter. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials and other videos in the future. Peace out.